This little town in the Charente region is home to 2,000 people. Nicknamed the City of Clay, Roumazière Loubert stands proud on its precious buried treasure. The clay dug up here has been used on local buildings for over a century. A mixture of lime and sand was put between each tile. You can see the difference in the colours and in the shape of the tiles. Nothing was thrown away back then, everything was reused. The industrial scale exploitation of the clay deposits dates back to 1875. Since then, the town has been dedicated to tile production. This is the ready-to-use clay, the raw material from the earth from which millions and millions of tiles have been made for 120 years. Each tile has its own mould. Do you have any to pour or to take out of their moulds? So this is the shell which we call the matrice, and the mould is over here. This factory is the biggest production hub in Europe. Each year, nearly 500,000 tonnes of clay are dug up. This is what's known as the gueulard, which churns out slabs of clay. This is what we call a green tile. That means it's just been pressed. It's still a bit rubbery. The tiles then have to be dried for 20 hours at 90 degrees. I knew nothing about tiles before I arrived here, but I've learnt. The clay is a living material. It's a bit like when you cook. If you don't have the right flour, you can't make a good cake. Further south, on the road to Angoulême, Chalet is famous for its Pinot de Charente. This liquor is made from a blend of grape must and cognac. The opulent villas along the railway were built at the start of the 20th century. They're standing proof of the town's booming past. The merchants who came from Paris settled here because there was a railway station, which made transporting the wine to Paris easier. These lavish mansions rival those found in nearby seaside resorts. This former carpenter knows all their secrets. I did the renovation of these buildings. A lot of the external woodwork was redone and the interiors were totally revamped. Yves Bonin is now retired. He and his wife are both local history enthusiasts and they have an extensive collection of vintage postcards from Chalet. This is the Villa Gracieuse. Isn't it beautiful? And it had direct access. To the railway line. We have a huge architectural heritage here. People used to build at will, with the means that they had. The rich man constructed a big house, while the less wealthy built smaller homes. Perched on a rocky outcrop is the medieval castle of Chalet. It's not only big, it's also long. It runs for 75 meters. The size Hall of Mirrors is just 73. It was occupied by the English during the Hundred Years' War. But the castle's best-known residents were the Talleyrand family. The interior seems frozen in the 18th century. This box was used for picnics. Just look at how pretty it is. The cutlery is made from silver gilt and was used for fruit or pastries. Born during the reign of Louis XV and dying during the reign of Louis-Philippe, Talleyrand survived several regimes. It wasn't just the people. All of their interiors were exceptionally elegant too. During this particular period of French history in the 18th century, we were envied everywhere. Chalet is also well known for its agricultural expertise. Around 20 cattle farmers keep one special tradition alive, and that's the feeding of the young under their mother. I can't mix up the mothers or I'll get a kick. It's not happened yet, but it can, especially when you're not really awake. Come on. The calves are fed breast milk for four months. It's the secret to their tender meat. In the south of the Charente, there's long been a tradition of putting the calf under the mother. My father and grandfather did it, and I'm keeping the tradition going.
far away from any big city, the Charente is where rural know-how and a rich local heritage live in harmony. Beyond the News. A daily opportunity to go beyond the headlines and explore the news in depth. Revisited. A return to places which were in the news a long time ago. Reporters. Our in-depth reports on international news. The 51%. A program about women reshaping our world. The Observers. Meet our observers who alert us to hidden realities. The Bollio Project. Listen to France's disadvantaged suburbs tell their own stories. Focus, exclusive reports by our correspondents and journalists. And down to earth, on the vast potential of our planet. Every day, watch Beyond the News on France 24 and France24.com.